The building of a wooden ship begins with the selection of raw materials. In Europe, oak was the most common, but other species such as ash, alder and pine were also used. The species of trees to be felled and the parts of the trees used were selected according to their natural qualities like hardness and shape. Straight logs provided material for the ship's plank shell and the masts, whereas suitably curved branches or roots were used for the knees and futtocks. Soft and flexible wood like willow or juniper were used to make tree nails. The quantities of wood required to build a ship were substantial. Based on estimates made in experimental reconstructions of 11th century Viking Age ships, the following numbers can be given for a 14 meter long medium sized cargo ship. One log of oak, circa 9.5 meters long and 35 to 40 centimeters in diameter. Two logs of oak, circa 4 meters long and 35 to 40 centimeters in diameter. Four logs of oak, 6 to 10 meters in length and 1 meter in diameter. 20 large and 60 small and medium sized crooked timbers of oak. Three to six logs of pine or alder, circa 4.5 meters long and 15 to 35 centimeters in diameter. One log of pine, circa 9 meters long and 20 centimeters in diameter. One log of pine, circa 7 meters long and 15 centimeters in diameter. In addition, about 600 meters of tree bark fiber was needed to make the ship's rigging, and about 30,000 kilograms or 41 cubic meters of wood was needed for the charcoal used in the making of the ship's iron parts, such as rivets and spikes. Large quantities of wood were also burned to make the tar used in shipbuilding. The protection of woodland areas with species and types of trees suitable for shipbuilding was regulated already in the Viking Age. But as ships grew bigger, war fleets larger and trade connections more active in the course of the medieval period, fear of wood loss led to more centralized control over timber resources. By the late 18th century, industrialization and population growth had led to a general shortage of wood in Europe. This development cemented the state as a central figure in the protection of woodland areas, at least those with specific types of forests or species of trees.